First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5 Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HE Travel at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One time use only, not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HE Travel to save 20%. These task forces have been created in the past. I think the DA's office was involved before. I know um, Patrick. I can't think of Patrick's last name. Pat Johnson. Pat Johnson. Pat, Pat, Pat Johnson. Johnson. He's been involved in them before. What, I, I guess my question is, and, and I don't know that you have the answer, but these task task forces, for some reason I'm struggling to say that, <laughs> seem to emerge every couple of years to, to, to bring down some violence. What happens to them at the at the completion of you know when the numbers start to do go down? Because I, this well, they, isn't the first time we've usually, seen this. Yeah, they usually give a report on what on what suggestions that they have that could help you know continuing on after the task force is disbanded. Um, but a majority of the time, it's literally for specific issues, and once that specific issue is is curbed a little bit, then they give their findings, and you know the committee disbands and so on and so forth. But I'm not saying that there hasn't been. There's still ongoing um, initiatives inside the city trying to address these issues as far as youth, gun violence, et cetera. This is coming together and, and literally putting all these ideas in one room and letting everybody know, like, what, is, what suggestions there are to offer? What, what can we do to help? You know, I mean, there's, there's literally national committees on youth violence, and they, they give suggestions on what you could do. You know, prevention, intervention, enforcement, reentry. I mean, there's a there's a number of ways that we can, you know, address these issues. And I think that, you know, sometimes, you know, being reactive it, it is sometimes harder because now you've yeah. got to really take all these initiatives and try and put them together of something that's already happened. Isn't this so, isn't this something though too that maybe should derive from or um, Utica Police obviously or some other organization should partner with the school? I mean, it seems like that's that's where I think it should happen is in the district. Well, and I actually had a conversation about Chief Williams, you know, in regards to that. But, I mean, you've got to also understand, you know, from a teacher standpoint that, you know, we've got a curriculum that we have to follow. So I think that that's where the intervention of the police department and this drug task force, you know, comes in and gives suggestions on what they could do throughout the community. I mean, because you literally have to have, you can't you can't expect teachers and by, and I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying that there's not other people in the community, but you could have you know a a task force like this give suggestions to school counselors, psychologists, what what they can do in order to intervene. Maybe have seminars. I mean, there's a number of ways that you can address this issue. And like I said, they used to have a dare officer. I mean, I think I read um, Officer Dunsman, you know, put in one of his quotes that the reason why he wanted to become a police officer was because of Officer Lacqua and the D.A.R.E. program inside mm-hmm. the city, inside the schools. So you can't say that that hasn't been influential in at least one or two people's lives. And I think that having something like the D.A.R.E. program put back into our schools is, is extremely important and really educating, you know, people of what's going on. I mean, it, I'll never forget when I was in school, we had, um, uh, the dr- mothers against drunk driving. Okay, having moms come in, give you know insight about what happened to their kids, and you know because of drunk driving issues. Who's to say that something like that can't happen in regards to you know a, a, a mother a of a victim that you know had been murdered? Yeah. You know, so I think that giving those real life stories and really does have an impact. I mean, I, I mean, I, I remember that from when I was you know in my younger age. I mean, graduating high school, middle school. I mean, so. You can't say that they don't have an impact because they do. So I think that something like that, and in regards to the initiative and what we can do and give a suggestion, you know, and part of that is also the the school, that, I mean, excuse me, the city, you know, giving some of those money towards the American Rescue Plan to the police department in order to be able to provide those services to the school district. So I think that this this has to come from a police standpoint, some, you know, a, a group of professionals and maybe Patrick Johnson, somebody that has been involved in this, and you know, just truly giving suggestions on what they think they can, they can, that can be done, and obviously using some of the guidelines from the, you know, a national level on how to prevent youth 
use gun violence well, and anyone, or use violence in general. And anyone who would say, I know American Rescue Plan money is derived from COVID, and anybody that would say that this has nothing to do with one another, I think it does. I think the the fact that kids were cooped up in their homes, not in school, um, you know, a lot of the lockdowns may have resulted in higher tensions and uh, more frustration and and uh, well if you if you look at what the treasury department released they they would they actually are sharing guidelines on how funds in the american rescue plan can be used for summer program summer camp programs mental health services food assistance job yeah. placement and programs and other services that help prevent crime so i really think that you could look at what the treasury department is is offering as far as guideline goes and utilizing some of those funds in order to help with what's going on but I think that, you know, when you see such a violent weekend in such a small community, I think that it really comes down to the fact that these these have to be addressed aggressively and they have to be addressed, you know, as soon as possible. Because, again, when you have people being scared to go, you know, see fireworks because people are out of control shooting people, I mean, there's where it comes down to. I mean, but I'm also going to say that I don't think that anybody that's committing crimes is also listening to my interview right now on, you know, WIBX on, you know, how to address these issues. So it's not like, you know, you can say, oh, please stop doing it. You know, you literally have to go inside the community and, and be part of the solution to, to some of those problems. So, uh, I Jim- mean, that's where, that's where this task force comes in. And I, I would hope that even somebody would come suggest, take suggestions from me now on how to put this together. I mean, you don't have to wait till somebody's elected to take ideas and, you know, build them together on your own. Well, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, the uh, the time to get this task force going isn't next January. It's yeah. it's uh, the sooner the better. Jim Zeka messaging into the show, we're planning to get the Utica Block Associations going again through the Home Ownership Center. Uh, they're being reorganized after the COVID shutdown. Maybe uh, Craig Grant would be a good yep. person to speak with. Uh, he's yep. been with yep. the Block Craig Association. Involved in all the community. And what the Block Community Block... Um, Meetings are is one in North Utica, one in South Utica, one in East Utica, one in Cornell, and one in West Utica. And what they do is they host monthly meetings, and the police department's there, the codes department's there, um, to go in and discuss issues about what's going on. So I think that, you know, even going back to looking into, you know, what's happened in the past year and a half with COVID, there really hasn't been much of a community, up until recently, much of a community um, outreach as far as, you know, finding out what's going on and, you know, having people be able to, you know, show up to meetings and express what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, you really have to get people back into the swing of things to, you know, let them know what's going on. You know, and another thing is, too, I mean, look at, you've got Mohawk Valley Crime Stoppers. You've got, you know, rebuilding the community. There's a number of programs that are that are going on. I just, that my, my suggestion would be, and is what this task force would do, is just literally be bringing everybody from the community into one room and, letting us know how one program might help another, um, you know, and, and what funds could be utilized in order to help some of these programs. Because, again, Patrick Johnson's one person. He does, a, he does an amazing job in what he does. But, again, my, my, from my standpoint, this isn't just, you know, one specific area that's having some of these issues. It's an entire city. And, uh, you know, and quite an frankly, everyone's nation. affected by it. And an entire nation, so. Yeah. Right, right, Exactly. Samantha Colosimo Testa, thank you so much for your time. We always appreciate you coming on and sharing your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right, thank you, Sam. One. And and just to be clear, I didn't in any way mean that you know it would be a a one man band type right. of a thing. I just know that uh, in I've seen different iterations of these groups that try to ad- uh, address uh, needs in the community, and, and it seems like Pat and actually and Craig Grant's another one. That those guys are always involved. In. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wasn't suggesting that it's something that he needs to tackle or something he needs to take on in, on his own uh, by any means. One thing, too, uh, Donna messaging in, but this was my thought, too, is I think that, you know, legislation that has come from Albany in the last two years, not to beat a dead horse, but, I mean, you've got the bail reform laws, you have uh, other laws that have been passed in Albany that kind of make it so people don't fear law anymore. They don't feel fear jail or being locked up because... You know, the bail laws are so now again, if you shoot or murder somebody, you know, that's yeah, that's I, a different situation. But I, I do see that as a different but type the disres- of a but the but the feeling I think toward police or some of these actions that Sergeant Curley was talking about with regard to assault on police or, you know, uh intervening on personnel being 
trying to do their jobs be first responders. Yeah, I think that derives from that. I think it could, you know, to the situation with, you know, teenage violence and specifically with guns or even people in their young 20s. Um, I don't know that this new bail reform law, because there's there's never been a repeal of the law that says if you shoot or kill somebody, we're going to give you an appearance ticket. Uh, it's it's for other things uh, that are still serious crimes, but obviously not not as serious as murder or attempted murder. So. I, I, I'm not exactly sure about that, but it could be. It probably all fits into a big piece, uh, a, you know, a piece of the pie. But, yes, yeah, something's got to be done because we can't, we can't have this happening every weekend. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply.